for atomic warfare. But in the early 50s, defensive measures against new threats of biological and chemical warfare set the stage for a pioneering and dangerous experiment. In 1953, the U.S. Army was conducting Operation White Coat at Fort Detrick, Maryland. It was a human research experiment to develop vaccines against biological warfare agents carrying potentially lethal diseases like Q fever, tularemia, and even the plague. Army volunteers would be exposed to diseases in an attempt to understand how these illnesses affected the body. Using this information, researchers then tested the effectiveness of early vaccines on the volunteers. To protect the Operation White Coat volunteers, the Army used the Nuremberg Code as its ethical basis for the recruitment and treatment of these willing human guinea pigs. The Army ultimately found its volunteers for this high-risk experiment in a most unusual place, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And the reason for that was that the young men from the Seventh-day Adventist Church believed in serving in the military in non-combatant duty. And there were very few types of positions that they could serve in without having to bear arms. From 1953 to 1973, 2,300 Seventh-day Adventist recruits who primarily served in the Army as medics and medical technicians volunteered to participate in these tests. I've obviously come from a uh, relatively small community and of meager means, and I thought, well, here's my opportunity to do something for my country and possibly my fellow soldiers. I uh, come from um, a long line of people that have served their country, and I did feel that this was a humble way to do that. When I got involved in it originally, I thought that I was going to give my life the same way that a person gives it in the battlefront. So it wasn't a question of dying. Were you asked to die this way rather than being asked to die in the battlefront? This group of men then became a researcher's dream that you want a control group that have similarities. All of them had the same health habits, no tobacco use, no drug use, no alcoholic beverage use. After the Operation White Coat volunteer signed the informed consent, he would participate in a specific test. Sometimes an injection of an infectious bacteria was given, and the soldier was isolated and closely monitored. But often they would be exposed in the same way soldiers in the battlefield might be, through aerosol sprays, in a structure called the eight ball. This is a one million liter test sphere. It's made of one inch thick stainless steel. It was manufactured when stainless steel was brand new. It was built so that bombs could be tested inside the sphere safely and produce aerosols of bacteria of the type that would be used to test biological warfare. Operation White Coat volunteers were asked to breathe the air that was in the test sphere. After the men were exposed through aerosols, they were immediately quarantined in the hospital. Within hours, most volunteers were seriously ill. Treating the men with what was available at the time, the medical staff studied the progress of the disease and administered trial vaccines. Even with all the safeguards in place, no one could protect these men from the unknown risks of exposure to potentially deadly organisms. In the critical part of the test, when it was running extremely high fevers and sweating, I questioned myself, why did I do this? Why am I doing this? The answer came was that you wanted to do this, you volunteered to do this, and you shall see it through. My head was, ex was exploding, and I was sure that I was going to die. And then I, was, I reflected and said, well, if I don't die, how is my life going to change or is it going to change? I want to try to communicate the depth of the feeling that you have when you go into a test like this that you do not know what the next day will bring. These men risked their lives and their long-term health. Because of a combination of good science and sheer luck, 
no one died. Operation White Coat was a model of human experimentation. In addition to an informed consent document, an institutional review board of scientists oversaw the medical procedures to ensure that each volunteer was closely supervised. The church also provided support for the soldiers, who were often quarantined for weeks at a time. The contribution of Operation White Coat volunteers to the development of vaccines did not only counter biological weapons at the time, but also protected soldiers in Korea and Vietnam from deadly diseases like the plague and malaria. Today, biological warfare is still a very real threat to civilians as well as the military. The work of these early volunteers is carried on at the United States Army Research Institute for Infectious Diseases at Fort Detrick. It is the largest facility of its kind in the world for diagnosis, patient treatment, and development of vaccines for biological warfare agents. The unique demands for safety of the Operation White Coat participants forced the creation of innovative containment facilities that have served as a model for civilian medical care. The engineering that was produced has been involved in protecting people with immunodeficiency, uh, patients that have uh, transplants and are immunodepressed, burn patients. All hospitals have some engineering uh, practices that were originally developed at Fort Detrick to allow for biological warfare. The bond that was created among the volunteers during their ordeal was as strong as any in combat duty. In 1998, 400 of the volunteers had a reunion at the local Seventh-day Adventist Church in Frederick, Maryland. Colonel Anderson spoke. During my presentation, I asked them, what do you call somebody who sacrifices himself um, so that other people would benefit, knowing that they wouldn't benefit for themselves? And somebody in the back of the room um, said, a hero. I got choked up. The room erupted in applause, and, and I realized that at that moment, I had connected. The White Coat Volunteers' contribution to both military and civilian medicine can never be totally calculated. They risk their lives in the hope of saving so many others. While the Army was conducting Operation White Coat, Colonel John Stapp with the U.S. Air Force was experimenting with the effects of powerful gravitational forces on the body. It was a necessary step before man could test the limits of extreme flight. 